Buff Nation! Let's go! Welcome into DMVR Buffs Prime Time. We are presented by Illegal Pete's. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour, 3 to 6 p.m. <laughs> every single day. Jake Schwann is joined by Ryan Konigsberg, of course, and our guy Uncle nearly sitting right between us, man. Yeah. I can't think of a better place to be than between you guys. We hey, appreciate particularly it, Particularly with that haircut. <laughs> Thank you. It is awesome. <laughs> NHJ is a fad. Can I touch it? <laughs> sure. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I got to say, we're all, we're all in trouble because we're sitting in here. We all have hoodies on. We all have our phones out. You've got a hat on. I'm, I'm like sitting on the and, edge of my seat. Like, oh, and uh, the door clearly says no hats, yeah. no hoodies, no phones. I'm scared. Yeah, you know, you know, we'll but, get through it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm with him. <laughs> he said it was okay. That will not get you out of trouble. That will get you in more trouble. <laughs> uh, we are excited to be teaming up with uh, Uncle Neely, the pregame show. We're going to be doing this a lot more. We are. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're live on your channel as well. We are. Simulcast, um, I think, is what they call it. In yes, the, sir. The in, professional in the term. Yes. And we're not professionals. Hey, you, you want to do like your intro? We could just like, you know. No, we don't it. have an intro. <laughs> it's just, or, hey, we're here from the pregame show. <laughs> Y'all check it out. No, but it's, it's awesome, man, to work with you guys, DMVR. Like we have kind of hit the ground running. You know, we get we get along. We, we work well. We do more working than twerking. Yep. You know? Yes. Uh, so it's, it's going to work. We're going to do a lot of stuff across the summer, especially when football season really gets here. Yes, sir. And uh, tomorrow after the game, too. <sighs> you spoiled a surprise. Oh, did I? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the people like to know. They like to have a little bit of uh... – <laughs> I'm in a surprise later They're in the show. They're surprised right you know. now, oh, too. Yeah. So. I bet they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At your haircut. I have to say, <laughs> though, like, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, notice that the first show we did together, like, oh, there's chemistry here. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, obviously we felt that, too. And super excited to be, you know, doing a bunch more. DNVR, the pregame show, like, you know, get, used, get used to it. Yeah, we coming. We are, we are coming. Yeah. Looking forward to it, man. It's going to be awesome, uh, you know, to – for the, the access that the pregame show has with Coach Prime and the coaches and the players and, and, and for you guys having that, that knowledge base of, you know, what is going on in CU Athletics for generations in the past and now, it's uh, peanut butter and chocolate is Twix, man. Like, we, 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 <laughs> want, we want. There we go. Uh, I must say, people who think we were twerking, we were – we have searched <laughs> – this entire building, <laughs> this entire campus, damn near, trying to find the perfect spot to do this show. Yeah. Uh, we thought and we, we had, had a perfect spot. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you guys were going to love the view. Uh, but someone, my man Chris Evans, who's lurking back there, he pointed out that uh, we looked like Harambe in the clouds. So <laughs> we, we had to move. But we, we, the delay is because we were looking for the perfect place. Yeah, exactly. And this is a great place. We found yeah. it. Yeah. And rest in peace, Harambe. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> That's how we were going to close the show. <laughs> Uh, guys, we have a spring football game tomorrow. Um, we'll preview that, but before, stuff has already been popping off like crazy. Rick yeah. Ross is here. Yeah. We have Michael yeah. Westbrook and countless CU legends here. Yeah. Uh, can you kind of describe nearly just the scene the last 24 hours here in Boulder? Man, it, is, it has been crazy. Uh, you know, I was used to this at Jackson State with Coach Prime and, and, and his gravitational pool of people just pulling up. But here we are at the NFL reception for CU players that were in NFL – and Rick Ross works, walks through the door, you know, on 420, you know, <laughs> uh, in, in Colorado. So yep. you, you could just imagine. Uh, but it was a great conversation. You know, he and Coach Prime, they both love Yellowstone. So they, they went back and forth about which characters <laughs> they were on, on Yellowstone. But as far as those CU players, man, one thing I'll say about, you know, Westbrook being here or Cordell Stewart or Chris Hudson, you know, the energy that they're bringing and talking about how happy they are to feel like they're back part of the program and where the program is going under Coach Prime, I think you're going to be seeing more and more of them in attendance for events and games in the future. They have been absolutely phenomenal talking to the players, talking about, hey, you know, I know we've been down, but see, you had great days before. You know, we got a Heisman Trophy. We have a national championship. We put people in the league. You guys are standing on the shoulders and can take it much further. And I think – What's most important to them and what is really hitting for them is the swagger. Like, the swagger is back with the program. When, when Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook are on the team, like, you have swagger. And I know Coach Prime talks about it. Like, swagger comes from winning. It comes from yeah. preparation. It comes from all this stuff. Like, that's what those guys were doing. And even though there's been a couple spurts here and there since those guys left where the team was good, you know, save for maybe 2001 – there hasn't been like that thing, you yeah. know. Our guy yeah. Sean Camp from the comments sent me a shirt, uh, him and, and his boy David with with Ice Cube rocking the CU yeah. hat. Like 
that you know back then the CU the black and gold it meant something for a long time it's just been people like me trying to talk about how cool it is all of a sudden that's changing again yeah. you know like that's what I think means so much to Cordell and all those guys is like oh like the program had got its swagger back and those guys have swagger man let me tell you this this Michael Westbrook story didn't know him other than knowing who he was never met him before I should say so he's outside of Coach Prime's office and he has on these killer Jordans and so, you know, Uncle Neely, I mess with people, you know. <laughs> so I'm standing there, I go, hey, man, what size are those? He's all 12 and a half. I said, man, you're lucky because there was 13s. I was going to get them off you. Prime says, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. I said, no, I could take. He said, he won't stop. Like I played against him. Michael Westbrook does not stop. So even if you get him, he's going to get him back. <laughs> and he's going to get you back for having to get you back. So that's the swagger that they bring. And, and, and Westbrook talked like that to the team and told him, like, man, this, you know, we fight. You know, we, yeah. we bring that dog out of each other, and it's, and it's about competing. It wasn't about, you know, the fans or this or that. It was about having guys that want to compete for all the right reasons. And I think you're going to see Coach Prime attract those kind of players with that kind of talent and that kind of attitude back to see you. For sure. I, I got to say, so, you know, Cordell got on the mic last night. We saw him, like, he was spitting. And, and then they sang the fight song. Oh, and yeah. I love, man, Yeah, it was – amazing to see all the players like getting into it but I loved coach prime's reaction you know like things are di things have been different this time around I think you know um any other coach they would have uh, the fans would have expected him to like learn you know learn the fight song when yeah. they get like right when they get here coach prime everyone understands like he's been moving you know, oh, no, he's been – yeah, absolutely right. And, and But I love that he was like, man, I love that. Yeah, he I got to learn he that. He was blown away by it and, and wants to learn it and will learn it. Has been talking about it, you know, all day, less than 24 hours after hearing that passion and performance of it. But you got to understand when he got here late December, a fight song ain't the priority. A hundred percent. So those kind of things are going to get there. But, man, he was so enthused to see that those guys 20 and 30 years later still seeing that song with that kind of passion – Oh, and yeah. looked like they were ready to run out behind Ralphie right then. Yep. And they would tell you, like, there's nothing better than singing that fight song in an away locker room. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that's like any of those guys will tell you, like, that's a tradition. Is like you win on the road, yeah. and then you get in that locker room, and you're banging on the lockers and singing that fight song. Like, that's, yeah. that's the, the peak. Yeah. It's the uh – the, the the Colorado version of three six mafia tear the club up, you know. <laughs> just like well, don't, don't play that right now. They will literally right. tear the club up. That's amazing, uh, Ryan. The fact that you got that and loved it it makes <laughs> makes it even funnier to me, Jack. I, I appreciate know my that. stuff, yes yeah. sir. Oh, you no doubt you know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, He'd rather uh, you make a Metallica reference, though. So. It's coming next episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Sean for my Lemmy shirt too, by the way. Yes, yes, those are awesome. We by the way, Sean, because I know you're probably listening. Uh, we haven't had a chance to open the big box yet. We, mm -hmm. we, our guy Sean sent us a, a package. Um, so when we get back to the bar after we're done here, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what he sent us. Sean said he just showed up to the bar and there's some other people there too. So we oh. have a, yeah. Let's go. We have a party to go back to. Let's go. Yeah, I, nuggets, can't wait. I can't tonight. wait to make it to the bar. Dude. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm going to keep inviting you and, you know. You're yeah, a busy you know, man. It, but yeah, everything that happens the past couple of times, you know, we have to do it here for logistical purpose. But I'm telling you, the pregame show is going to be at the bar. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, I just wanted to ask you more about the Cordell thing because you were gone on Wednesday. Just your thoughts on everything he said. Because he was very impassioned and talked a yeah. lot. I mean, he might need to be a coach. For sure. Like, the way that he can speak and the way that he can – I mean, he had me motivated. I'm watching that on the plane like – I need to get out of this seat. Um, but, man, it, it's so cool. Like, there there are former players who have been closely tied to the program and have come in and done stuff, you know, like our, our guy Matt McChesney, you know, like he can really get fired up too. But Cordell Stewart, you know, that's the best quarterback in program history, mm -hmm. uh, a legend. And to see him kind of like have the fire reinvigorated in him about Colorado football is really special. And, you know, to have – uh, a pre-existing relationship with Coach Prime and the yeah. way that Coach Prime has embraced him, not just Cordell, but all of the, these former buffs um, that have come back. And I usually stay away from the term former buff because you're a buff forever. But um, I, I, it, it's just really cool. It's yeah. really cool to see him come back and just speak that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about this spring game. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about Jimmy Horn. Yeah. Sounds like he's going to give it a go. 
uh, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think he is. He 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 wants it to be a surprise. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Willis Reed coming out of the tunnel. You know, right. New York Knicks. I know I'm dating myself with that one. <laughs> Y'all go Google it. Uh, but yeah, he had a little you know groin tweak and, and and set out for the last scrimmage in practice. Uh, but he was out there today going around, and uh, I, th- I think you're going to see some Jimmy Horn tomorrow. Sounds good. Um, we had one player into the portal yesterday. I think we're up to like 12 or 13 in this spring cycle. Yeah. And we were talking about the defensive line and how is that going to affect tomorrow's spring game because there's four or five scholarship defensive Yeah, you know, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, remains to be seen how it's going to impact it. Mm-hmm. But there's going to take some management to it because we are down to, you know, 4D linemen now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm expecting a big running game from the offense because right. <laughs> you know, eventually those guys are going to get winded. Yeah. Rule number one of the D-line is to stop the run, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's to contain or get the quarterback, you know. So uh, running the same four guys because so many hit the portal uh, and, and best wishes to them, uh, you know, it's going to take a certain navigation for for the game. Uh, mm-hmm. But I know those four four guys are going to try to put on the show for ESPN and that national audience and, and Buff Nation, though. I just don't understand. I have a couple points here. One, you know, you said it in our comment section one day when you were watching the show, just like this spring game is a showcase, sure. not just for the players who are going to be here, but for the players who are not going to be here. So I don't understand why all these guys did this right before the spring game in my opinion, I would want to put my tape on ESPN and get out there and play, especially some of these D linemen who are seeing all the other guys around them go like, oh, I'm going to play if I stay around. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get some serious burn. So I agree with you. Wish them all the best. But I question the decision making to, to go before sure. the spring game. Absolutely. And I am honored to know that while you're on live, you're reading my comments. Oh. Because I love watching the show. We read it's everyone. painting me right now to be on it because I'm normally typing. <laughs> yes, you know. Uh, but What's yeah, funny I, is I, I usually think we get all of yours. Like, uh, you know, I, I noticed the logo. And so yeah. I, and then one day someone wrote, like, in the post comments, like, Neely was dropping gems and you guys were just <laughs> missing them. Like, you got you to gotta pay more attention to what Neely yeah, I tried saying. to co-host from the keyboard. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, back to what you were saying uh, – I think in this new era of college football, spring games are also like the preseason games in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You're either trying to show and prove that a spot for where you are, but it's also a time to show your talents to other colleges around because the portal is a real thing. That door swings both ways. And I would not have uh, the week of the spring game or day before decided to enter portal. I would want to you know, get me some quality film out there. Right. Uh, so we'll see how that works for those guys. And the other drawback is that knowing this staff uh, from Coach Prime, his assistants, his coordinators, they're honest people. Mm-hmm. Coaches call other coaches. Yeah. And so no matter how well you were doing, when a coach calls for a reference on Chris Evans because he's standing over in the corner, I keep giving him plugs, <laughs> you got to attach to the story this week, ABC, but he quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> EFG, but he quit. So – there's that dynamic and that rub to it that I, that I think may have not been, you know, the best thing for those guys. But, again, wishing them the best, totally focused also on, on who's here and who's coming. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame for all parties uh, that, that it was kind of done that way from, from some people. But, you know, you, you, uh, you move on. I, I do have to laugh, though, because all of us, you know, we're, we're very in tune with what's going on in the mm-hmm. program. But – all of these other people outside are just seeing a bunch of people enter the portal. And you're seeing, like, other fan bases try and dunk on Colorado. For, oh, you know, looks like the Louis luggage is on its way out already. And it's like, no, that's not what's happening here. No, yeah, no, we'll, we'll, no, no Louis luggage has exited the building. No, all the luggage he brought is still here. Yep, you exactly. know, and so uh, – and I'm, and I'm saying this not – by any means on behalf of the program, by any yeah. means on behalf of Coach Prime, this is just Neely speaking on behalf of Neely. Uh, you don't see guys leaving that you didn't anticipate that they would leave, yeah. you know, or, or that they were a good fit or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's not just Colorado. That's any school. Mm-hmm, of course. You know, you talk to any coach and a guy hits the portal, it's not like, oh, no, I didn't see that one coming. Yep. <laughs> you know, there have been conversations had. There have been film meetings and production. But, but one thing I'll say about Colorado and Coach Prime, he didn't cut anybody. Right. Like nobody from this program has been cut, been told to leave. Like he has coached everybody and is proud of everybody that stuck through this process. People make a decision to leave, and that's their decision. Well, yeah, and, and you know that's that's the natural process, right? You're mm-hmm. you're in practice every day as a player, and you start to feel like, okay, I'm probably not going to start here. You yeah, know, like yeah. that I guy's mean, you better a, than you, me. You get a gauge for it. Yeah, you get a gauge for it. Uh, I was talking to one of our players at breakfast the other morning, and we were talking about you know college football and where we're trying to take this this program, and he kept using 
uh, Alabama as an example. And I know Georgia, you know, is there right now. But you know, you look at the past ten years, Alabama, right. Alabama, Alabama. And I said, well, you got to ask yourself this, bro. Look around your room. How many guys in that room with you do you believe would start at Alabama? Mm-hmm. And he shrugged and said, well, I mean, I don't know. I said, so how do you think you're going to beat Alabama? You know, like mm-hmm. you, you have to get guys in who have that, that same level of talent, that same level of drive, that same level of competition in them. So if you're looking at the best, so if, you, if you're D-line at Colorado and you can't see a path toward D-line at Georgia – this is not this is not the organization for you because we're right. headed to the top. Right. And there are guys that, again, I keep saying wish them well because they're going to do well. They're going to find a place where they fit and their skill set fits. Yep. But where this program is headed under Coach Prime, they mm-hmm. just knew like, well, you know, that's that's not for me. Right. And I'll also add just too with the portal and everything. I've seen a lot of people like, where's all the transfer ins coming? It's like. Portal just opened. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's Colorado spring game tomorrow. There's Alabama's, yeah. LSU's, Notre Dame's, Nebraska's, Certainly. all these schools. Certainly. So all these players are going to start entering the portal after Saturday. The ones that wanted to get the film of the spring game out there. You, you nailed it. I mean, it's the reverse of what we're saying guys should do. Those other guys are doing. Yep. You haven't seen the, the tip of the iceberg for the portal in the next seven days. Right. More guys are going to get in it after this weekend. And you'll see where those guys start landing. You know, there's going to be more more talent out there. What were the spring games you mentioned, Jake? It was Alabama, LSU, Notre Dame, Nebraska. Are any uh, of those live on ESPN? Um, I don't think so. No, no. none of them mm-hmm. are. Only one is. Which That's one what I was wondering. wondering. Yeah. Which one is that? Oh, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah Colorado. <laughs> you uh, you uh, came across Chris Fowler, RG three earlier today too. <sighs> Man, you know, spent some time with them as they, you know, uh, they come in and they spend time with Coach Prime and other coaches. That's how they do their broadcast, right. you know, picking them for, for Nuggets information. Got a lot of that on the film, so you'll be able to see that on the, on the pregame show YouTube. And, of course, we share content with you guys, so look for that to come. But my biggest Chris Fowler moment, I didn't film. I'm walking through the weight room, and Chris Fowler's in there working out by himself doing pull-ups, and he's got the biggest chain, you know, around his neck for extra weight. <laughs> and I didn't realize it was him because I just know Chris Fowler facing him. Yeah, this guy, with a this, suit on. Yeah, 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 this guy, his back was to me. I was, you know, I was like, hey, man, that's a nice back. <laughs> you know? And then as I go around through, through, through the weight room, it's like, man, this is Chris Fowler. I, I got to tell him how jacked he is. Like, Stu looks good, you know. <laughs> for sure. Much like your hair, I want to touch it, but uh, I refrain, you know. So he's here, He's he's here, man. RG3 is here, and they did their homework. They were at practice all day, you know, this morning, uh, meeting with coaches and players. So it's going to be – I know we'll be here, but there's going to be a good broadcast out there for the nation to hear what they have to say uh, because they did their homework today. Mm-hmm. Chris Fowler uh, sounds a little bit nervous about the format of yeah. tomorrow. I, I, he's every uh, you know time I've seen him talk, he's like, "Yeah, you know, it's going to be really experimental. It's going to be really different from anything I've ever done before." But I think it's going to be good because they they should be on the field. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. It uh, sounds like RG three and who who's the other person? I forget who it is. RG3, Chris Fowler, and one other. The two of them are going to be down on the field. Yeah. So Coach Prime will be on the field uh, as well, and some, and they'll be with him. Is he going to be mic'd up, Coach Prime? Uh, you know, he, at Jackson State, he was mic'd up, and so were some of the position coaches and players. Uh, I, I, I know he's going to be mic'd up for part of the broadcast. I'm looking forward to him when he's mic'd up for the stadium sound system mm-hmm. so the fans can hear what, oh, what, yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. Because uh, I think a lot of people <clears throat> miss out on because they see Deion Sanders, this unicorn mythological fe- uh, fixture, how much he's into coaching. Mm-hmm. Like, if you come here and play for Deion Sanders, you're going to get coached by Deion Sanders. Mm-hmm. Like, and people will see that firsthand tomorrow, how involved he is in the offense and the defense in each position and those guys and what they should be doing on this play and what they shouldn't be doing. He's going to get in there, man. Mm-hmm. And that's why we push back so hard when people use the term celebrity coach. You know, he's a celebrity. He's a coach. Yep. But he's not a celebrity coach. Hey. <laughs> he Amen. Is, he is a coach. Amen. And he gets into it, man, and he knows every nuance of this program. All right, uh, let's get into what was talked about today. Charles Re- Kelly. Really quick. Go for it. Anything Anything uh, you think people should expect tomorrow? Uh, Other yeah. than the unexpected? Yeah, the unex- <laughs> unexpected. Uh, I mean, there's going to be some celebrity sightings. Gillian Wallow just walked in here as we were yep. you know, getting set up. Funny Gillian Wallow story. Our first game at Jackson State. Uh, in in Miami against FAMU, uh, we score a touchdown and get a penalty because Gilly decides to celebrate and spike the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, like, be on the lookout for those guys to do anything. They have a great time when they're around Coach Prime. Uh, I don't know, man, how much of the unexpected – like there's so many – I don't know what to expect tomorrow. 
Like with Deion Sanders, you never know who's going to pull up. Like who knew Rick Ross was coming to the NFL reception last night? So, yes, Wiz, Wiz Khalifa will be here this weekend. Okay. You know, so that's, that is factual. We can, we can jump on that. Uh, there's going to be some nuances to the game uh, that's going to be well, well worth it, whether you're in the stadium or watching on TV. Yep. Uh, and, you know, Coach Prime, uh, we always look at his 14 years in the NFL, but we forget about his 14 years on the NFL Network. The guy knows how to put a broadcast together. Yep. Like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good. You worried about the weather? I'm not because whatever happens, it's going to change in thirty minutes. That's one thing I've learned about my yeah. short time in Colorado, being here since December. If you're mad about the weather, just go inside for thirty minutes and come back out. That is uh that's high level Colorado knowledge that you've uh <laughs> I've you've absorbed it. I've seen it go from twenty three at six AM to seventy two at lunchtime. It's, yep. And back to thirty before you leave work. <laughs> yep. Just hang on, it'll change. All right, before we get to what Coach Kelly and uh, Coach Lewis had to say today, shout out to Shador's number two barbecue sauce. Let's go. Shador Sanders' number two barbecue is a tomato-based, rich, thick, sweet, molasses style barbecue sauce with tangy vinegar and fiery heat that finishes with a subtle, smoky note. This barbecue sauce was created in partnership between Shador Sanders and PLB Sports and Entertainment, and this unique barbecue sauce is available on plbse.com for a limited time. You can use code ALLCITY, all caps, one word, A-L-L-C-I-T-Y, at checkout for 10% off your order of number two barbecue sauce. Uh, we haven't tried it yet. Do you Have you tried it, Neely? I have oh, tried, I've it. tried it. I have tried it, and it goes good on everything. Yeah? Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have it at my house. I've had it, you know, usually when we partner with a place, I've had it for a while okay. already, <laughs> you know, and so we've had it and love it. And I have to give a shout out to the listeners of this show who have been yes. using that code um, because, you know, we always love to just show people the power of DNVR. Uh, so, yeah, you guys have you guys have been flexing a little bit for us. So we appreciate you. A lot of you. sauce. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Sauce moving. We're moving sauce. We're dripping. <laughs> so here, here's, the, here's the funny thing about the sauce. What's the name of the sauce? Uh, Shador's number two barbecue sauce. Number what now? Number two. So get Don't this. Coach, like- Coach Prime at practice today, he, he does his huddle up. Out there on the logo, we practice a Folsom Field today, you know, so the guys could get get experience being out there. And he calls the team up, and he, after he does his thing, he said, "All right, break it down on two. And everybody just kind of stood because two doesn't have a number yet. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if y'all know mm-hmm. Shador Sanders hadn't earned his number yet, so he was Shador was like me, like, are you, yeah. <laughs> is it official? Am I two? Because uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just looking at my jersey, there's nothing on it. You know? <laughs> now my barbecue sauce has number two, but yes, my, you know, my practice jersey does it so. So two did break him down today. So I think that's a sign that we, I think we can rest assured he's going to be number two. Yeah, yeah. I haven't worried too much about <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> well, and I guess the player who would try to take number two would probably be uh, next on the transfer portal out, right? I don't know if he's next. Probably was first. <laughs> first, <laughs> one, right? It's not going. It's just not going to happen. Uh, also, shout out to Foco. Foco is the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line includes apparel, accessories, toys collectibles, novelty items, and more. You can get Broncos gear, Nuggets gear, Avs gear, um, all good stuff. They have some Buffs gear up there for sure. Uh, you can get an, uh, the the hat, your nice uh, straw hat that you wore the other day. Oh, yeah, that, that was fire. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah, it's like a little beach hat. Yeah. yeah. It's got some like uh, Buffs logos, but also like a Hawaiian pattern underneath it. Man, you're all over the place. <laughs> I love it. Foco always has our back for Colorado sports, and they have yours too. Get the best gear around by using the link in our description. For all non-presale items, use the promo code DMVR for 10% off. That's code DMVR at FOCO. All right. Um, so Charles Kelly, one of the first questions he was asked today was actually about the depth on the D-line. Mm-hmm. Um, when he talked about that, he said you have to adapt to things. Um, he, interestingly enough, said we've been pre-planning for some of that. I think it's happened everywhere, a lot of places, so it's nothing um, that the other guys don't have to deal with. Um, he also talked about the players still on the roster, of course, said I um, – Want them to buy into the standards and values of the organization and what Coach Prime has Amen. set. Um, he talked about what he wanted to see from his defense in tomorrow's spring game. Um, mentioned fundamentals, tackling, that stuff's gotten better, sure. he said, as it started in the spring. Um, he more specifically mentioned the second level and attacking blocks. He said the biggest thing that doesn't matter what defense you run, you got to be able to get off blocks and tackle. There it is. Yep. There um, it is. He was also asked about the setting for tomorrow, and uh, Coach Lewis said something very similar. But he said um, there are guys that play better when the lights come on than they do in practice, and there are guys that practice better and don't so, do not do so good when the lights come on. Um, a lot of stressing execution and just being ready for the moment from these guys today. 
The um, lights are going to be on tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. Sure. And I, I think that's part of the learning curve. You know, uh, all of this process, and I'm talking about all of this strength and condition in February, you know, practicing in March uh, and, and, and closing out in April, you're trying to find out who you can trust. Yep. You're trying to find out who you can depend on. Mm-hmm. And this is tomorrow is the culmination of that. So I don't care how good you looked at practice and it's just us looking at you. Right. How do you look with 40,000 people looking at you? How do you look knowing that the camera, ESPN, and you're on national TV? Who can perform under that standard? And if I can't trust you in that setting, which is all, you know, positive yeah. feet, everyone's yeah. cheering for you, yeah. how can I trust you yeah. when you go on the field at TCU? One of my favorite Charles Kelly moments. He's walking the line, pre-practice, the warm-up line. And it was an extended conversation with a player from a team meeting. And he's like, man, you got to understand, I'm, I'm not getting on you. I'm trying to build you. Because if you can't take me, one guy getting on your ass, how are you going to take 80000 mm-hmm. when we're on the road somewhere? And you think about that. It's like, you know, it, if you can't respond to challenging coaching, how are you going to respond coming in the tunnel and everybody in the building is against you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. So he, he, he's a no-nonsense coach. Uh, I totally agree with, with his assessment there, what he said. You know, uh, we're going to go to war with what we have, get the best out of those guys and, and see how they perform. Uh, and I think that it's going to be an entertaining package and it's going to give people a good glimpse of what they can expect from Colorado football. But I also have to circle back to something Coach Primer said over and over. The team you see tomorrow mm-hmm. is not the team you're going to see against TCU. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, it's a line in the sand – you know, you turn the page from spring ball and you start building toward August 1st camp and, and, and for that regular season this fall. Yep. And a lot of those names and faces and personalities are going to change. For sure. And, uh, and, and that kind of started with the interview that you did with him where he said, we haven't even gotten started in the portal yet. No. And I think no. a lot of people were like kind of blown away by that or like thought he was exaggerating. I don't think he was exaggerating. So we, we had to pull back a second, hit pause, and realize how new the transfer portal is. Yep. <laughs> you know, we're talking about something that's less than five years old, less than three years old. Really. You look at, so it's, it's, it's this new kind of thing that, that fan bases are not used to really dealing with and the door swinging both ways. Everybody celebrates when you get somebody, <laughs> and then they try to, your, your opponents try to make, oh, you lost somebody, like mm-hmm. you, you're off the rails. Neither are necessarily true because when you bring somebody in off the portal, there is a degree of buyer beware. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a used car. Uh, and Coach Prime is going to want to know from those guys, why are you in the portal? You know, what are some of the things you do in your life that you give 100 percent to? Why are you going to be different here? You know, you, you got to find those kind of things out. And just because there's this guy in the portal that's all world does not mean he fits your organization and what you're trying to do. Right. So I can tell this fan base, you're going to see some big names in the portal that do not end up at Colorado. Yep. Because they may not be good fits for Colorado football and what mm-hmm. Coach Prime is trying to build. And there's a lot of guys out there, if we're being honest, who are just chasing a bag. And that's probably not going to happen here. No, it's not going to happen here. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Coach Prime says, I'm getting re- you ready for the NFL, not the NIL. Yep. You know, the, the, the NIL will come if you're the kind of guy the NFL wants. Right, exactly. Like, you know, Travis Hunter is going to get plenty of NIL money because he's a baller. Yeah, he does that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's him. I can't wait for y'all to see him. He's, he's, he is going to play both sides of the ball tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, it's going to happen. More wide receiver or corner, do you think? Uh... It, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a balance, but it's been 99 to 1 as far as right. practice is gone. Mm-hmm. And when he went on one play on defense, you know, he showed what he can do. The guy is so naturally gifted at playing corner, you know, it does not take a lot of prep time for him to do that. Right. Uh, so he's been learning routes and, and uh, uh, him and Shadour getting more chemistry as far as, you know, wide receiver one and QB one. You can hit a light switch and he can start playing DB. Mm-hmm. So believe me, you'll you'll see him at corner and you'll think he's been practicing all spring at corner. And and for my eyes, he has gotten a lot better at wide receiver just in the spring. Oh, absolutely. And that was the intent. Like focus on what you need to get better at. Yep. Uh, you know, you you got this. Not that you don't have anything you can learn at DB, but you've got that down. You need to get crisper and cleaner at wide receiver. And I think that's going to continue across the summer. You're going to see him lined up at wide receiver more August camp. Yep. Uh, and then situationally he's needed, he's going to go in and do that. And, and <laughs> the guy can still return punts and kickoffs too now. Like speed is speed. <clears throat> like he is an athlete. Yeah. He can, he can literally do it all. And I don't know if I've ever seen someone cast a fishing rod as accurately as he can. <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach Prime would tell you, he, he said in a press conference the other day that when you take his age now and my age then – he is light years ahead of where I was. Like, he, he is that gifted of a guy. He's just got to finish building and get there, put on a little more weight, get a little, little stronger. Uh, but his speed and quickness, like, guys don't get hands on him at practice. 
Yeah. He does one or two jukes and he's going up the sideline. The 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 change of direction yes. is on a dime. On a dime, man. Yeah, he's he's an outstanding athlete. Yeah. And so I think there's there's always a lot of hype surrounding guys like him, but I think people are gonna see tomorrow on national TV. They're like, No, that's as advertised. Almost like Shadur Sauce. It's good. It's mm-hmm. not just, you know, yeah. pretty face on the bottom. Right. It's, it's actually good. <laughs> Uh, Coach Sean Lewis was asked about him today. Real quick, uh, from the rest of Charles Kelly, uh, he was just asked about after spring ball and how the guys are going to work out together and stuff and said, um, we've got some leaders in there, some guys that have emerged to help kind of lead those offseason mm-hmm. uh, training things. It says it helps when you find some leaders. You find the people who can influence other people. And that's a critical thing when, you, when you're building a team. And he also said that in context just with all the transfer portal guys coming in here because there's going to be a lot of, for those guys to pick up, Yeah, um, obviously. To Sean Lewis, um, he started off saying that he's going to have a vanilla call sheet for tomorrow. So not Smart. Yeah, not revealing too much. No, not at all. No, no, I see people in the comments on the pregame, Sean Neely, you showed the play. Do you really think we're going <laughs> to run that against Nebraska first home game? Like, do you really think that would make this channel in, in, in April if we, were, if we were depending on that play? Right. Well, and the other thing is, if you watch Sean Lewis's offense at Kent State, like, there is – Base plays that you know if you're TCU or Nebraska, this is happening. Yeah. And that's the same stuff you're going to see tomorrow. Like It's not like they're going to never run those plays that they're going to run tomorrow, but those are the base. Ryan, you said it, man. Like, I don't care who's playing who. It's 11 on 11. Yep. Like, and somebody's going – the quarterback is going to hand the ball to somebody. Now, can your guys tackle him? Yep. Can your guys stop that receiver? Like, they, they, like no one's giving away signals and the play at the same time. And then none of that is going to translate into something we're doing in October. Mm-hmm. So, if you're out there in Nebraska and you think that you're watching DMVR and you got a leg up because you're sending Matt Ruley's plays, good, <laughs> right, good luck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, he's probably watching Oh, he's watching you, right now. He's, he's in watching the comments. Us. Yeah. He's got a burner account like uh, uh, Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin Durant, you know. <laughs> Coach Prime's all he thinks about. That's <laughs> all he talks about. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it really is. Um, he did say that there will be wrinkles as we get to the fall, um, but he did say there will be some things to make it fun for the fans. Um, he also said it will have all that spring game flair and all that spring game flavor, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, it'd be, it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be a production, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was asked about, like, the setting that Charles – the same thing Charles Kelly was asked about, the players kind of performing – Basically said the same thing. If this is intimidating to you, then I mean the program may not be for you at this point. And there's nothing attention. wrong with that. Like right. you know, to the fan base out there, this is the kind of thing you got to find out. You want to find that out on a Saturday afternoon in April, not a Saturday night in September. Mm-hmm. You know, so we we're gonna find some stuff out tomorrow. We're gonna learn who's that guy, and who ain't that guy. Yep. He said, if I need forty five thousand people in the stands and I need a national audience to get you to go, well then you're not one of my guys. In all honesty. Um, he was asked that about. That is all honesty. <laughs> yeah. there it is. <laughs> he was asked about the progression from practice one to now. Said the attitude, the effort, the energy. Uh, all the players have done a really good job buying in. He's pleased with the effort and energy now. Um, he was asked about. And I thought this was interesting. How different his offense has been implementing here than it was at Kent State. Um, and he just mentioned the players. And he said. Getting to know these unique players makes it uniquely different. Mm-hmm. Learning that in the uniqueness of the skill set of each one of these players has made this install unique. Um, <laughs> That's four unique yes. in one quote. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. Um, but said they're having a better grasp of understanding and stuff. Uh, mentioned mental errors is something that he's focusing on tomorrow, hoping to see uh, few, if any, mental errors. Mm-hmm. Um, he was then also asked about, um, again, just comparisons from Kent State and here. Um, or actually, this is stuff about um, kind of implementing his offense all the other ways that he's done it at all his other stops, not just before Kent State and here. And if it's the same offense that he was using at Kent State here, he said it's completely different from everywhere that I've been. And again, that comes from the ideas within the staff room, and it comes from the skill set of the players. It's going to have its own unique nuances. Sure. The only thing that's going to be consistent from the ones in the past is that we're going to go really fast. And that's what you want to see from a coach. Um, To me, it's the biggest problem in coaching is coaches who say, this is my way. You all have to learn how to do it this way. Yeah, Mm -hmm. That's how you lose. Exactly. The best coaches are the ones who come in and say, oh, Shador is really good at that. That's going in the playbook. Mm -hmm. Travis Hunter is unguardable running this. That's going in the playbook. Mm -hmm. These offensive linemen block better doing it this way. 
if you go into a place and you say you start trying to fit square pegs into round holes, you are going to be bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to tear the peg up or the hole up. <laughs> it ain't going in. Like yeah, exactly. Something's going to break. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you're exactly right. You have, to, you have to build your systems or the plays of your system around the talent that you have and what you can coach them up to. And that's one of the things that's limiting about, about spring ball is, you know, the, the time constraint. Like, time is the enemy in college football. Uh, it, it, it's seemingly a year-round uh, sport because, you know, you got bowl games all the way through January, those invite bowls into February. And then you're back out there on the field, you know, March, April. Uh, but when it comes to direct coaching, there's not a lot of time. There's not a lot of time to figure this thing out about what that guy can do or can't do. And, and touching on what you were reading, Jake, is that what's so important right now after tomorrow's game, these guys got to keep those workouts going on yep. their own. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, there is no coaching, you know, next month. You know, we got to get back to August before we all together again in that kind of structure. So which guys are going to come back in shape and still have been in that playbook and still know the terminology and the lingo and then put on weight the wrong way and that kind of thing, you know? And that's, I think, where there's a big advantage for the Buffs, not only in Shador Sanders being their quarterback, you know, a guy who can organize all this stuff and make sure these guys are out there, but also um, all of these players coming from Jackson State who have a lot of experience for, with what Coach Prime wants, what to expect. And so, you know, you can get these guys together Certainly. and run player-led practices. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, they can all help each other be prepared so that when they come back in the fall, they're not, you know, uh, failing the conditioning tests. Absolutely. And, I'm, I, you know, I told you before, I don't speak on behalf of Coach Prime. I'm certainly not speaking on behalf of Shadur Sanders. I'm speaking on, on behalf of history. If you're going to play receiver – and Shador Sanders QB one, you're going to work out with him this summer. <laughs> like it, it is. And it's, why would you it's not? It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like he, it's a mandate. Like they work hard together and build that chemistry, uh, and and learn who they can trust amongst each other and motivate each other. So you know, as Coach Prime says, it's going to be an exciting day tomorrow. But just keep in mind, what you see tomorrow is not what you're going to see versus TCU. Right. You're, um, on, you're on my mic cord again. And then the Travis. I, I like being on your mic cord. <laughs> <laughs> then the Travis. I'm just gonna hold your mic cord. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like Marissa with, exactly the light earlier. with the light. <laughs> uh, he was asked the about tripod. Travis. Her name is Tripod. <laughs> and whether it's a better he, name if you're a guy. And Coach Kelly. <laughs> Y'all missed that. Just rewind <laughs> it. Just take, drag it back, hit play. You missed that. <laughs> Uh, Coach Lewis was asked about Travis Hunter and whether him. And Coach I don't think I've ever seen you this <laughs> red before. Like you, you, you are red. I got the joke. No yeah. red in the facility, bro. Yeah. No, we don't wear red in here. I got the joke. So it's still, you're still getting redder. Like it, it's got to peak uh, at some point, doesn't it? Um, he was asked. So if I say tripod again, will you get redder? Like if it's just stop, if it's man. a recurring you joke, stop. <laughs> he said it. I just wonder if the word is a trigger. You know, it's like. <laughs> it's not a trigger. We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, coach Lewis was asked about uh, Travis Hunter and whether Coach Kelly. Or, and I thought you were going to say going tripod back. Hunter. I thought no, like, no. Say, yeah. <laughs> whether they were going back arguing who deserves Travis more. Um, coach Lewis had a great coach response. He said, "I don't deserve a damn thing." In all honesty, wow. <laughs> but then he said. So, you know, whatever great players um, I'm fortunate to coach and that coach allows me to coach, I'm going to earn the right to continue to coach them or him, meaning Travis. Um, he's going to help in all three phases of the game. He's a dynamic player. He's able to do all of that for us. Yeah, so. he is. You know, Coach Prime this morning in this room called on leaders from each unit uh, to, to challenge your unit to what to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And to hear Travis get up and say, hey, DBs, <laughs> we got to stop them. Y'all got to even stop me mm-hmm. when I'm with the receivers. Like, he understands he's in both of those units. Uh, and, he, and he challenges the receivers to be unstoppable, and he challenges the DBs. You got to stop yeah. us. Uh, what a unique and awesome <laughs> thing that we get to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, I forgot. Charles Kelly was asked about special guests that he's going to have here. Um, he <laughs> said, other than his family, I have some special guys in recruiting that are here. That I can't mention, they all know who they are, uh, and we're excited about them being here. Love that. Cryptic. With that, yeah. um, some guys have announced that they are here. Four-star safety, Jordan Johnson Rubel is in Boulder. Um, he was one of the guys that we talked about previously. He's been coming for a long time. Four-star Bama commit Sterling Dixon. He plays Edge. Um, ben, a Alabama commit, of course. He is here in town, been committed to the Tide since December First, FSU transfers Derek McClendon and Brendan Gant are here. 
Brendan Gant is the four star, former four star safety. He was listed as linebacker on their roster. Wow. Yeah. And his um, dad played with Coach Prime. Oh, really? Okay, yep. nice. Um, <laughs> Derek McClendon was from Tucker, Georgia. Uh, he was a part of the 2019 recruiting class from Florida State, was a high three star. So he's here. So there's another defensive lineman also here. Uh, former ULM transfer Anthony Campbell is visiting. 6'7, 277. Yes. That's Hello. Some that's some groceries, dude. <laughs> yeah. um, what does he play? Defensive end? It just says defensive end, okay. yeah, on ULM's roster. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to say this. If you are, first of all, Coach Prime is Coach Prime, all right? And he's so involved in coaching. How can you not, if you play secondary, want to come be coached by him? But then let's, let's talk about, let's come down and just talk about opportunity. If you're watching this game tomorrow on ESPN, and you're in the portal or thinking about the portal and you pay de defensive linemen, what an opportunity. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what an opportunity, you know, to come here. Because there's a want and there's a need, you know. And, and that I mean Coach Prime and, and uh, uh, Coach Sal are just taking anybody. Coach right. Sal ain't just taking anybody. But I'm just addressing the opportunity. Yep. Uh, you know, it's kind of like those guys uh, in the draft and, and you didn't get drafted and so you go going undrafted free agent. Well, the beauty of that is you get to pick where you want to go. So you can see where, hey, there's an older guy with an expiring contract or this, this team has four people in front right. of me on rookie deals. You can go where there's, you know, some opportunity. There's some opportunity here for D-line. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some opportunity. So when you go through that list and these guys are edge rushers or D-linemen, my God, man. You know, I, I just wish they could suit up and play a little tomorrow. You know? <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. what's interesting is, like, when – People come to visit basketball teams, they can run. Like, yeah. they'll go, you know, have like a Friday night run with all the recruits mm -hmm. and the players. It's too bad you can't do that, yeah. you know, nearly One day. as much. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see the portal. Oh, I also and, don't and know if you're supposed to do that, but yeah. they do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're there. <laughs> Winston Watkins, Winnie, he's here. Let's go. Uh, and Cormani McLean is here. Yeah, he is. He is. And he's, he's, gonna, he's here, here. Yeah. yeah he's going to be mm -hmm. here. Yeah, for sure. And you know what else, Jake? What's up? Your color is back. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> About time. The yeah. loved it. Oh, I, I saw. I could tell. <laughs> um, so, like, if I say tripod again, would it happen again? Nope. Okay. I'm strong. Uh, you, see. I'm strong. He's fortified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to some questions real quick. But before, a word from our friends at Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses company who offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've ever worn. Extremely durable, but if you break or lose your pair of Shady Rays, you can get them replaced for free, Neely. And I have lost my shades today. I normally clip them right there, and I have uh -oh. no idea where they are. Well, I'll tell we'll you what. you some. Yeah, you can go exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use code DMVR for 50% off two or more pairs of Polaroid I was expecting sunglasses. 10. All your other announcements have been 10. Yes, sir. 50? 50%. 50 Shady I'm about to hop on that, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can try for yourself the shades rated... Five stars by over 250,000 people. Five stars. Five stars. That's like the Travis Hunter of sunglasses. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> there you exactly. Go. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, shout out to DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Uh, Nuggets tonight, right? Yep. Uh, do we? Do you have a line on that? I don't. Minus two, I believe, the Nuggets. Minus two? Well, we need you to pick it every week. 135 on the money line. There hey, you go. trust Rhino. I mean, when he – look – He's Ryan to y'all. He's Ryan on the gambling. Like, trust him, man. <laughs> um, uh, over 22 and a half for Jamal Murray. We're going over 23 and a half for Jokic. I think the stars are going to shine tonight. Love All that. Right. There you go. There's your DraftKings pick of the week. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code DMVR. New customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code DMVR. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050. Or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. You know cool. how you bet three games like for a parlay? Yeah. They should call it a tripod. <laughs> yeah. Give me a hundred on the tripod. Here we go. Yeah. Nuggets minus one thirty-five. Jokic over. Murray over. And that is your Rhino DMVR tripod. <laughs> tripod of the day. <laughs> one last one. Shout out to Game Time. Uh, if you're still trying to get last-minute tickets for this CU spring game, you can check out Game Time. Um, they have been going pretty quickly mm -hmm. on there. I haven't yep. seen what 
even the listing is today. But that, this is one of the craziest things to me is, first of all, they never sold tickets to this before. Yeah. So they sell in the tickets for ten bucks, which was a, a, honestly a great deal. Outstanding deal. Now people are turning around and flipping these things for like fifty. Capitalism 60 is bucks. a beautiful thing. In, <laughs> in all this ugliness, capitalism is a beautiful thing. Well, like, and, and what I love about it though is like. You know, when the Nebraska game game comes along, I'm going to be very anti reselling tickets, right? Because be. this needs to be a black and gold crowd out there. It, it's the first home game against a historic rival, yep. and people don't need to be out there reselling their tickets at a markup. We need to have the stadium packed with, with us. Exactly. Yeah. But this one, the only people who would be buying up these tickets are other Colorado <laughs> fans. <laughs> it's like just circulating. It's just so cool to me that people yeah. are like willing to. Spend fifty bucks, sixty bucks, and to don't. see that demand, that want, yes. you know, that desire for it is is, is very encouraging. Man. Yep. There probably will be some Nebraska fans here just because they can't stop thinking about us. Of course, <laughs> snag the tickets without the stress of game time. That download the game time app, create an account, and use code DMVR for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DMVR for twenty percent off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Okay, I don't know how we're going to kind of do this because I'm on like a 30-minute delay on my screen here, but uh, I can try and show you. 30-minute? Or 30 delay. seconds, sorry. <laughs> so the show just started? No. <laughs> We've been going for a lot longer than 30 minutes. a <laughs> 30-minute delay. Uh, but Alyssa, if you want to throw some questions on the screen, I'll try and read them. Ooh, uh, I, I have questions We'll try to read first. them tomorrow morning. Like a, It's a 30-minute delay. <laughs> Go ahead. I have questions first. All right, give me your... Uh, dark horse standout player tomorrow. Woo! Who makes some big plays and, and turns some heads? All right, all right. I like this. Give me uh, Jeremiah Brown, Jeremiah Ooh. JB Brown, uh, coming off the edge. Mm. Uh, I think he's going to get a scrimmage sack. Of course, you are not going to put your hands on the quarterback in right. a scrimmage, but I, I think he'll get one. All right, Jake. I'm going to go Anthony Hankerson. Ooh, nice, good one. Yep. I think he's going to – I think we're going to see – you alluded to it. A lot of big runs getting bust uh, maybe just due to fatigue but lack of numbers. But uh, Dylan Edwards, I expect him to have plenty of big ones, and I think Hankerson's going to have a few too. Yeah, yeah. I, Dylan Edwards, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I'm, I'm still putting an asterisk by it because it's the run game. It's hard to really measure right. the run game depending on how long the scrimmage goes against four D linemen. But, mm -hmm. man, Dylan Edwards is, is special. I will, he's special. I will go spring game. He, he was the, the all-star of the spring game last year. He's got Coach Prime's eye, Charlie Offerdahl. Let's go. Good one. That's a good one. That's a feel-good one, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a feel-good yeah. one, too. Yeah. All right, how about MVP? Travis Hunter. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, we're, we're all in agreement. I'm going to go with Hunter. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll have impact on both sides of the ball. That's the thing is, like, you know he's going to get a touchdown. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he's probably going to do something crazy on the other side, too. Dude, mm -hmm. the championship game in, in Jackson State, he scores a receiving touchdown and has a pick six. <laughs> like, who <laughs> does that in real life? Like, like, this ain't Madden. And he's out there doing that kind of stuff. And it ain't a fluke. It's not like, oh, we just, the other team was laying down. This was a competitive ball game. There was a touchdown pass from Shadur to Travis that sent that bowl game into overtime. Yep. Like, those guys got even more chemistry now. So, I, I think Travis is going to have a big enough day to be MVP. Speaking of Madden, <laughs> in our Madden League, we have a 32-team Madden League with all, like, DNVR fans. Um, we, have, we are, you know, farther ahead in life. So, I believe we were in the 2025 draft. And I just trade it up to, to get the number three pick so I can select Travis Hunter. <laughs> Good for you, man. Yeah. yeah I, for you. It's going to be sick. I had the someone... number what pick? Number three. As in tripod? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone DM me on Twitter today asking for help for their 2025 Madden draft also. And they sent me the names. It was like Cormani McLean. I know who you're talking to. They're in yeah. our – that is that is our league. Oh, and really? I know who it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's two buffs right there, man. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, Caleb Mathis in the chat for player two, I guess, Oh, I love that. That's a good one. No, that, um, that is a good – like when you look at like Dark Horse because he is he's not a big name on the team as yep. far as when he got here, uh, but earned his number. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get it. His dad is on the staff here, but his dad coaches secondary. Yeah. You know, he's not in the receiving room, and, and Caleb truly did earn his number. That is a good dark horse selection. So shout out to who, who shout out to who's paying enough attention to this roster to pick Caleb. Well, I love because Caleb is running some routes out there, man. Caleb tweeted out a video and said, "Coach Prime gave me my number, and I loved it." Ever all the comments were like, "No, he didn't you give it. you anything. Yeah. You earned it." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been times this week uh, 
where the ones were messing up, and Coach Prime's like, "Hey, I, hey, give me somebody," and it's and Matt Caleb goes in. Yep. You know, so in a, in an instant, he goes from running with the threes or the twos to running with the ones. So he that's a good dark horse pick. Uh, Lisa, do you want to tell me a question or two for Neely here? Without uh, the 30-minute delay. Without the 30-minute yeah. delay. Got it. Uh, Eli wants to know, what about Zico? He's been quiet lately. You know, quiet is quiet. Yeah. He could <laughs> he could have a big game tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's going to be, you know, we'll see. Yeah. You know, it's one ball. You yep. know, and, and you'll probably have uh, three quarterbacks, you know, get reps. Uh, and and we'll see how those you know chemistry goes because those guys develop you know trust during practice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing on on defense. You know they like like who's in the game and who's not in the game. So I'm sticking with our I like our collective dark horse picks mm -hmm. for having breakout games. Plus Caleb. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The one from the fans. Caleb is yeah. a good one. Yep. It I makes a, me want to change, but I'm a JB <laughs> fan, so I'm gonna leave it there. I have a question for you. Uh oh. Who's your favorite to wear number one? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. Ooh. He didn't give it out last year, right? Yeah, I don't, and I don't, I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he should. But that's you know, it's his call, right? Uh, but I don't think we have a number one yet. Mm. Tra you know? It would have been Travis. Yeah, arguably. Yeah, no doubt about it. If if that was his choice, right? You right. Know, if that was his choice, but like when you look outside of a, a, a Travis Hunter uh, or some of the guys who are coming, as I just measure spring ball, we don't have a one in the room yet. Mm. Opportunity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have another question, Alyssa. Um, Connor wants to know, is it going to be more of a game tomorrow or a showcase? It's going to be a game. Uh, you know, these guys are going to be put in positions to compete. Uh, but because scrimmages or spring games, uh, you know, have a script time-wise for television, yep. you know, it's not like these two coaches and, and Kelly and Lewis are coaching against each other like it's, you know, October or something. So there's going to be some appearance of showcase to it as far as, um, let's make sure we this, see this, we see yeah. this guy because we're trying to evaluate. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes uh, you you may have preferred Dylan Evers to run this way, but we need to run him this way because we're trying to evaluate the offensive lineman. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's going to be a lot of nuances to it, much like NFL preseason games. You know, you'll sit there and watch a preseason game like, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. What well, they're doing it, they're just trying to watch a guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, so it, the goal is not necessarily a first down or a score. I want to see how this guy responds when we run the ball two plays in a row behind him and right. he can't come out the game. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good example because he didn't end up having a great season, but uh, Zach Wilson threw, I think, like three picks in a preseason game last year, and he was like, you guys don't understand, like, I'm testing out to see what I can get away with right, right. now. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like it's not it's not supposed to be perfect right now. Yeah. So there's going to be some of that to it. So uh, give me 65, 70% game and then the other 30, 35 showcase. Because there's going to be some deliberate things done because we're trying to see how people respond. Mm -hmm. It is the last practice of spring. <laughs> it, that, it, that's what folks don't realize. Like you get three scrimmages and <laughs> this is scrimmage number three. This is literally a practice, yep. an open televised practice. Yep. Uh, we got a super chat from Lance. He said, "No hat, Jake, the human tripod." <laughs> I like that. Got that's got to go on a coffee mug. <laughs> uh, and the redness. <laughs> yeah, the what? redness returns. That's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> look at you. Do you have another question, Alyssa? <laughs> um, just a lot of people in the chat asking if Jimmy's playing tomorrow. Yeah, he's gonna give it a go. Uh, you know, he was out there today. Uh, he rested uh, the previous scrimmage slash practice. Uh, he took that day off, and he's he is. You know, just a little slight, slight growing thing, uh, and and Jimmy Jimmy wants to play. Yep. You know, he'll tell you he's got ten gears. He's only used three of them. He's the fastest guy on the team. Uh, you know, uh, Willie Gaines is coming from Jackson State, who's a pretty fast guy. I can't wait in August to see them get mad at each other and want to just race. You know, because yep. they are two fast guys. But I think Jimmy's gonna try to gonna try to go, even if it's just for a few reps. And if he doesn't, you know, it, it was the right thing. Totally. It, it, he needs to make that decision, he with the trainers, on how he can go when you don't want to aggravate something and make it worse. Because, yep. again, these guys have to stay in shape when this game ends. So he needs to be able to work out next week and the week after, and you don't want to sacrifice that for uh, making a play in a spring game. Amen. For sure. Any other questions, Alyssa? Uh, I keep seeing this in the chat. So they said, Neely, do you think they will practice fourth down in a ding -a <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I was like, I've seen this in the chat the last couple of days. I have no idea what it means. Is that a tripod? I, 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 <laughs> sounded like a trap. Yeah, like, like I'm going no comment. Like I, <laughs> I ask Jake. Chat thing. <laughs> um, are they doing the buff walk tomorrow? I don't think so, right? 
I don't heard. Know. No. no, I don't know. I haven't seen. Um, and then someone Connor threw out Yelverton as his sleeper pick. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. And yeah. then I guess th- my last question on the format is: they are going offense versus defense. One, you know, ones, ones, twos, twos, and then ones, twos. Okay. Yeah, because okay. the true measuring stick is all in all this is you want twos versus ones. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so that has to happen. Got to give that guy a chance. You, to you, show. you absolutely have to. Like that's the purpose of it. This is evaluation. This is seeing. Who can we can trust? Who can move up? So you got to give that two an opportunity to go against the ones. I watched the – Which uh, is going to be, in my opinion, be like the better part of the football part of it because you want to see this guy perform against their best guys. I, I do feel bad for the defense, though, because I watched the TCU spring game uh, because I'm a sicko and, uh, you know, I'm already thinking about week one. But uh, at the end of it, it, it was like 42-0 offense versus defense. It was like, yeah, well, <laughs> the offense has the ball. Yeah. Uh, but – you know, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, but that's not what these these coaches are evaluating. They're, they're evaluating the score, they're evaluating the effort, they're evaluating the the, the lack of of mental errors, uh, they're evaluating the assignment and alignment uh, and technique. You know, those things are not just buzzwords. Those things are being filmed and being measured, uh, and then there'll be conversations. You know, going forward based on that. Back in the day, especially when Coach Barnett, have you met Coach Barnett yet? He does some of the radio stuff. When Coach Barnett was the coach. He actually used to do a draft. So they would split up into two actual squads, you know, yeah. the black squad, the gold squad. Yeah. And winners would get steak and lobster for dinner. And losers would get hot dogs. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Which if, if we had two if Travis had the Hunters, <laughs> then let's do that. And two Shadors. Like, yeah. It's like, okay, so if Travis and Shador end up on the same team, like, uh, I know we're eating hot dogs. Uh, <laughs> they did that. <laughs> like, just go ahead and start boiling them or put them on the grill, whatever you do. I know we're eating hot dogs. <laughs> They did that at Auburn, and Hugh Freeze, same thing. Winners get the steak, losers get the hot dogs. And then he gave the defense a 24-point advantage, and the game ended in a 24-24 tie. Wow. But the that's, players had see, a little under-the-table <laughs> yeah. agreement. But that's almost like golf. You know, you got to handicap this thing yep. because spring, spring games are geared toward the offense, Yep. you know, as far as when they're scoring. So that I, I like that approach. You, you spot the defense and, and let the offense have to catch up. There we go. I can go with that. But if you just flat out did a draft here, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Well, you make uh, Shador the captain of one team and Travis the captain of the other. All right. So then the team but that the, gets Jimmy Horn is going. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, you, to be fair, we only have, you know, one quarterback right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I have context work. on the dingling. Oh, God. Coach Prime said it. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm seeing that he said it at Trinity, and the dingling was something that Caleb said that Coach Prime was saying when he was coaching them in Little League. It's on his page too. Yeah, but I still don't know what it is. Yeah, so I don't, I don't want to speak on it. Is it? Huh. How Man. about? Don't touch uh, it. No, yep. yeah. Liter- yeah. literally. <laughs> don't it's touch a Coach it. Coach Prime saying. Uh, how about? Are we getting Coach Prime's theme music tomorrow? Gonna be interesting because at Jackson State, when he switched songs, it was unveiled at the spring game. Mm-hmm. It absolutely was. This was the this was the introduction of the new thing. I would not be surprised if we get that tomorrow. Awesome. I feel like we have maybe already been given some hints. Yeah. I'm going to go say you heard it already. It's right. beyond yeah. a hint. You just yeah. probably didn't pick up on it. Or like, maybe like I did. people who text me about helmets <laughs> in the background. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the there's a lot question. of information out there. Yeah. Last question that I saw in the chat was: Are they wearing different jerseys for tomorrow? Or are they wearing the same practice jerseys? You know, here's the beauty of it. Uh, I was, you know, with uh, Smitty and Cordell and looking at all Coach Prime's concepts for the fall. I mean, we're, we're going to be rivaling, if not surpassing, Oregon in combinations. Mm. Wow. Uh, so it's, Clip it's, it. Yeah, I mean, put, put, <laughs> I'm guaranteeing that. Like, we've got some uniforms, and the worst one is the, is the best one. Like, they, like mm. you, you can just close your eyes and pick combinations. Uh, don't know what they're – I do know. I uh, don't know what they're coming out in tomorrow, uh, mm-hmm. but when I tell you that's going to be far different from what you see week to week in this fall. Yeah. We we may not re- repeat a uniform as well. Let's go. Yeah, we may not repeat a combination. You may see you know a helmet once or twice, right? But something else is different yeah. in in the in the overall scheme of it. You That's can awesome. never mess up black and gold. And yeah. they've got some variations of it, man. Like yeah. it's <laughs> it's going to be well worth it. You know, it's I'm telling you, it's going to be right up there with Oregon as far as combinations. Love to hear that. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, 
I'm getting more context. So this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like your fourth so inches, you don't, is you don't get anything. So Say again? Like fourth and dingling, like you don't you don't convert. Ah, I got it. So you, yeah, you okay, I get it. it. I'm still not touching it, but I get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Term of phrase. Yeah, I yeah. Guess. All right. um, so I guess third and tripod is a passing down because that's long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And fourth and dingling is a run play. I, I think I'm picking up. I'm still not fully driving down that road. You know, I did just kind of turn and look down the street. I think I'm going to make a U-turn. I think they're actually changing it from the black and gold game to the tripod and dingling game. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll be in here. <laughs> um, we are not streaming the tailgate tomorrow. I'm sure we'll have pictures and content, but uh, we'll be doing a post-game show. Yeah, we are. we are doing a post game show, and I can't wait to see everyone at the tailgate. Yep, that thing is going to pop off for sure. Like, in way, I I, I can't wait. I can't yep. wait. We we dropped it yesterday. Just wanted to like get an idea of how many people were going to come, and the RSVPs went absolutely crazy. So, um, just come through. I mean, we could stream it, just no audio. We could we could look into that. All right, that's coming from production. So yeah, there you the go. expert. If I asked for that, I would get yelled at. Like, you always want all this, that, and the other thing. But if they say it. I am looking at three super talented people, right, who, I mean, you talk about scouting locations, so I would bank on that. <laughs> like, we got some steps in today just to get to here. I always said, where's the mirror? I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> and, well, you know, again, it's <laughs> obvious <laughs> that we, that we well, look good. They're the real heroes of the show, right, or else we would have been hanging out with Harambe. <laughs> yep, yep, that's true. It's Which, true. We had a whole squad help help us out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there and it is then. Spring game tomorrow, it 1 is p.m. tomorrow at 1 p.m. ESPN. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come hang out the tailgate before. And, and then, get uh, this. Here, here's here's a nuance, right? Uh huh. The same time that it's on ESPN mm -hmm. is actually taking place here too. Yep. Yeah, yep. they call that live. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. But it's, it is occurring at the exact same time. And we will be live after the game. We will be live after the game. Can't wait. Cannot wait to watch. Notice that none of us, including these three, have committed to what time that will be. <laughs> yes. we, we may have to walk a mile again. Because, yeah. But it will we, be after the game. Yes. And then while we're, you know, lugging, you know, giant boxes and everything around here, we're being accused of twerking because mm -hmm. we're five minutes late. I know. Yeah. yeah no, we're working. <laughs> Exactly. Wait, Man, wait, wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to watch these guys out there on the field tomorrow. I can't wait to see a full Folsom field. Yeah. Uh, just, I'm looking forward to that, man. Just going crazy. I can't wait to see Ralphie. Um, and uh, I'm praying for the weather to just keep getting better. It's, it's, it's increased a little bit today, mm -hmm. uh, the way things are looking. So hopefully it, it turns up a little bit. But, you know, bundle up. Come, come get a little uh, whiskey blanket on at the DNVR tailgate. And, yeah. and, and, you know, let's turn up. And never, ever forget. The sacrifices of Harambe. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Ended. Big scope buffs? Scope buffs. Scope buffs. buffs.